Hello everyone, I'm Alexander Trofimenkov and welcome to my class. Today, let's prepare a tart with exotic fruits. Usually, the tart consists of a shortbread shell and the filling. But today, I'll replace the traditional shortbread shell with a shortbread flour, which I will fill with the crunchy layer, the almond sponge, the coconut whipped ganache, and mango and passion fruit confit. I will share with you my recipe of a special Viennese shortbread, which can be piped to obtain a desirable shape. You will also find out how to make the shortbread look attractive, shiny and appetizing. I will decorate my exotic tart with a few raspberries to create a colorful and tasty contrast. Let's start! I will start the preparation with the whipped coconut ganache. For it, I will use the following ingredients. The glucose syrup, the gelatin, which is already soaked in cold water, whipping cream, white chocolate with 33% of cocoa butter. I'm using Valrona Opalis white chocolate, but you can use chocolate of any brand you prefer, and the coconut puree. Instead of the coconut puree, you can use coconut cream, but I prefer using uh, exactly this ingredient since it will have much more uh, of the coconut flavor. To begin with, I will pour the coconut puree in the saucepan. I will start gradually warming it up to about 60 degrees Celsius. And at the same time, I will add the glucose syrup to it. It's not a mandatory ingredient here, but it will help stabilize the foam. We're gonna whip this ganache and the glucose syrup will help stabilize it in the whipped stage. And I will also add the gelatin at this point. The idea is just to warm up all the ingredients to 60 degrees Celsius, but not to boil them because boiling will ruin the delicate coconut flavor, which I want to preserve in coconut ganache. At 60 degrees Celsius, the glucose syrup will melt completely, the gelatin will melt as well, and then I'll be able to mix these ingredients with the chocolate. There is no need to melt the chocolate, by the way, it will melt with the heat of the liquids, so it can stay in crystallized state. Once everything dissolves and the mixture reaches 60 degrees Celsius, I remove it from heat and will pour it on top of the chocolate. After this, I will blend all the ingredients with the hand blender. This is necessary to ensure a proper emulsion and good incorporation of liquids into fats. After a minute of blending, the mixture looks like this. It is shiny, smooth and completely liquid. It is perfectly fine at this point. It has to be like this. It will uh, stabilize in the fridge and then we will whip it. And this is when it will change its structure. And now I'll add the last ingredient, the cold whipping cream. As I said before, this is a whipped ganache. And using cold whipping cream ensures it can be whipped to a light and a very stable texture. If this cream is warmed, the fat molecules will be ruined and fat is responsible for uh, aeration and stabilization of the whipped cream. And like this, we, if the cream was warmed, we won't be able to, to prepare the whipped ganache of proper texture, of creamy texture, of a light texture. So this is why we're always keeping this small part of whipping cream cold. So now I'll just pour it inside the jug with the chocolate and uh, coconut puree and mix with a spatula. The 
There is no need to mix for too long, just a brief mix until all the ingredients combine. And the reason I'm not using a hand blender at this time is because I don't want to ruin the fat molecules which are present in the cold whipping cream. If you blend the cold cream with the hand blender, the knife of the blender will uh, destroy the little fat particles which are responsible for aeration and stabilization of the whipping cream and we won't have the same uh, light and creamy texture of the whipped ganache when we mix with spatula only. Now after mixing I will pour the whipped ganache into a large mixing bowl, we'll cover it with the plastic wrap and we'll put it in the fridge for 12 hours or overnight. This time is necessary for the chocolate to set, for uh, the fat which was present in the coconut puree and the whipping cream to stabilize and only after this time we'll be able to whip the whipped ganache to a very light and stable texture which is very easy and pleasant to work with. Now I'll prepare the passion fruit and mango confit for our tart. To make it, I will use the passion fruit puree with seeds, but if you don't like the seeds, you can skip this ingredient and use the regular passion fruit juice or passion fruit puree. Then the mango puree, regular sugar, and an H pectin. This ingredient will help bind all together and thicken the mixture and jellify it a bit as well. Like this, it will be stable inside the tart, but will have a very pleasant and gentle texture. An H pectin is perfect for fruit fillings in cakes, desserts, tarts and other pastry products. So first of all I will put the purees in the saucepan and we'll start warming them up to 25-30 degrees Celsius. As you can see I'm using more of the passion fruit than mango because I want this acidity to balance the sweetness of other components of the tart, but if you don't like such uh, acidic uh, fillings, you can switch the ratio and use more of the mango puree and less of the passion fruit. So I will start warming all the ingredients together. I would like to mention the temperature once again. It is 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. No more than this. Maximum would be like 40 degrees uh, because we're gonna add pectin and sugar later on, and if the temperature is higher than 40 degrees Celsius, the pectin will start uh, clumping and we don't need these lumps in the, in the confit. So this is why we're going to add the pectin and sugar mixture uh, when the purees are relatively cold, 25 to 30 degrees Celsius and maximum is 40. Before adding the pectin and sugar, these two ingredients should be mixed together. And this rule applies every time you work with pectin. So I'll put the pectin inside and mix it with a whisk to disperse it well, like this. Now the puree is at 30 degrees Celsius and I will start adding the pectin and sugar mixture gradually like this, slowly, mixing with a whisk. And when all the mixture is inside the purees, I will need to bring everything to the boil. Boiling will activate the pectin and will make our confit set. This is why it is vital to bring it to the boil, but there is no need to boil it for a long time. A quick boil of 15 to 30 seconds is more than enough. Okay, now the mixture boiled, I take it off the heat and we'll transfer it immediately into a clean mixing bowl.
The comfy is ready. Now I'll put the cling film on its surface and we'll transfer it to the fridge. Uh, it has to stay there for three to four hours to cool completely to three to four degrees Celsius. It will set and then I'll be able to use it. Now I'll show you how to make the Viennese shortbread. This is a special recipe of the shortbread, which is made in the way to be piped with a piping bag. And after baking, it will hold the shape perfectly. The recipe is simple, but there are several crucial steps that you need to follow to obtain the perfect result. To make the shortbread, I'm using the following ingredients. The room temperature 82% fat content butter. This is a dairy butter, but you can make this recipe using vegetarian and vegan alternatives as well. Then sifted ice and sugar, cornstarch, also sifted, room temperature egg whites, sea salt, and sifted all-purpose flour. I'll begin with the following. I'll put the butter in the bowl of the KitchenAid and we'll start mixing it with the ice and sugar and the salt. So the butter goes in. Then I'll add the ice and sugar. And lastly, the salt. I'll start beating these ingredients with a whisk on low speed first, increasing the speed gradually to a maximum. The idea is to whip the butter to a very light and fluffy texture. Now, after a few minutes of whipping, it takes about five minutes on maximum speed. The butter is ready. As you can see, it turned almost white. It is very light, fluffy. It looks like this. It is perfect now. It will ensure a very soft and pipeable texture of the shortbread, as well as uh, the delicate crunchiness of the shortbread after baking. Now, I'll put the mixing bowl back. And now I'll start adding the next ingredient. It will be the egg whites. I'll start adding them gradually to ensure proper incorporation and a good emulsion between the fat, which is present in butter, and the liquids, the water, which is present in the egg whites. This is why uh, low speed and gradual mixing is essential. And it, this is also the reason why the egg whites have to be at room temperature. If you use them cold, the butter will start setting and you will have small lumps of crystallized butter in the mixture, which is not good. You will have to mix all these ingredients longer until they melt again. And this is just a waste of time. So this is why I'm using the egg whites at room temperature. So low speed and I'll add the egg whites gradually. When all the egg whites are mixed in, it is time to add the last two ingredients. I'll show you the texture of the butter with the egg whites first. Nothing changed. It is super creamy, smooth, with no lumps of butter, with no unmixed parts of egg whites. This is the way it has to look like. Like, like the buttercream. Now I'll remove the whisk and we'll add the sifted flour and the cornstarch. I'll add them at once. Mm -hmm. 
Then we'll mix everything with a spatula. After mixing, the shortbread will look like this. It will have very smooth and soft texture, just like you see now. It is very soft um, and it can be easily piped with the piping bag. This is why I will transfer it into a piping bag with a round piping tip of 14 millimeters in diameter. When the shortbread is ready, it is time to pipe it. To do this, I'll be using a stencil. Here I have a parchment paper with two rings uh, drawn on it. Uh, they are of 18 centimeters in diameter. And I'll place this parchment paper on a flat tray. And then I will cover this parchment with the silicone sheet. And now I'll start piping. to create the borders first and then I'll create the middle part uh, for our tarts. So this is the technique. Uh, you need to pipe the petals close to each other so they stick well and don't uh, fall apart after baking. And using this technique I'll continue making the border for the first and the second tart. When the borders are ready, I'll pipe the shortbread inside the tart shell to create stability. But at the same time, I will keep the middle part of the tarts empty uh, to fill it then with the crunchy layer. A layer here. Like this. Now the tarts are ready to be baked. Uh, I'll bake them at 150 degrees Celsius for 10 to 15 minutes. And then I'll show you the special technique to create a shiny golden finish on the tarts.
After 15 minutes in the oven at 150 degrees Celsius, the tarts look like this. They have a uniform golden brown color. They're properly baked. And now I'll leave them to cool down at room temperature for about five to 10 minutes before applying a special technique I promised to show you. A piece of advice from me, in your oven, the tarts might take more than 15 minutes to bake to this stage, to this color. So keep baking them until you get uh, this uniform and golden brown color. To create a shiny surface on the tarts, I'll be using a mixture of the egg yolks and whipping cream. I'll apply it on them using a spray gun, but this technique works with um, a brush as well. It is super easy. I'll just pour the cream into egg yolks, we'll mix everything together and we'll strain into a jug of the spray gun. Now I'll start spraying with a distance of about 30 to 40 centimeters and with a low airflow and low pressure as well, not to break the tart shells. I'll be covering them evenly everywhere to create a very thin layer of the egg yolk mixture. If you do this with the brush, uh, clean the brush every time to create a thin layer as well. After spraying, I'll put the tarts back in the oven at 150 degrees Celsius for another five minutes. This time is necessary for the egg yolk to coagulate and dry, and it will create a very shiny and golden brown surface on our tarts. After five minutes in the oven at 150 degrees Celsius, the tarts turn this beautiful and golden brown color with a lovely sheen. Now I'll leave them to cool down at room temperature for 30 minutes to one hour, and then we'll continue making the crunchy layer for them. The next step is the preparation of the almond sponge. This is one of my favorite recipes. It makes a very tender and moist sponge, which uh, can be eaten straight from the fridge. It will not harden, it will not get too dense. It will be very soft and tender. So it consists of the following ingredients. The marzipan or the almond paste 60%, which means it contains 60% of almonds and 40% of sugar the eggs, the salt, I use sea salt in all my recipes, then cornstarch, sifted. This recipe is gluten-free, so uh, you can use it if you have uh, intolerance to gluten or if you just don't like to use regular flour in the recipes. The egg whites, sugar and um, sunflower oil. As you can see, there is no butter in the recipe and this is why it will not be overly hard in the fridge. Thanks to the oil, which does not crystallize, it will stay soft and uh, very tender. To begin with, I'll start adding all the ingredients 
into the food processor. I'll start with the marzipan. Then I add the eggs. And lastly, the salt. I'll start mixing all these ingredients on low speed first and then we'll increase the speed gradually to create a very smooth and homogeneous texture. If you don't have a food processor, you can do this in a stand mixer using a paddle. First mix the marzipan only to soften it a bit and then add the eggs gradually to create a uniform and homogeneous texture. After several minutes of blending, the mixture turned completely homogeneous and smooth. There are no lumps of marzipan. I'll show you the texture. It looks like this. It turned uh, whitish. Now it is time to add the next two ingredients, the oil and the cornstarch. And I will mix them again in the food processor just until combined. Medium speed, no need to blend them on high. We just need to mix all together. Meanwhile, the marzipan, eggs, cornstarch and the oil are being mixed in the food processor. I'll start whipping the egg whites. I'll put them in the mixer bowl. I will add the sugar all at once in the beginning because we have very little sugar in this recipe. So there is no need to add it gradually. And I will start whipping all together on low speed first and then I'll increase the speed gradually. After a few minutes of whipping, the meringue is ready. I'll show you its texture now. Here it is. It is very smooth, soft. Uh, it has a bird's beak, as you see. It is whipped to medium stiff peaks. It is not over whipped, it is creamy. And such meringue is perfect for sponges. So now I'll transfer this mixture into a mixing bowl and we'll start adding the meringue gradually. I'll add the meringue in two additions. I'll start with the small one, just to uh, bring the texture of the marzipan mixture close to the texture of the meringue to make it slightly lighter. I'll mix it like this, gently. And when the first part of the meringue is mixed in, I'll add the second part.
The almond sponge batter is ready. It looks like this. It is very light, fluffy, full of air. It is not too thick and it's not liquid. Now I'll spread it in uh, the silicone frame like this for baking sponges. It, its size is 35 by 35 centimeters and it also has a border of one centimeter height. It is very convenient to bake sponges in it. But you can also bake the sponge in a cake frame or just spread it on the silicone sheet or parchment paper and bake it like this. Now using an offset spatula, I will spread the sponge as even as possible and then we'll put it in the oven. I'll start filling the corners first, like this, and then I move to the other side. After spreading, the sponge is ready to be baked. I'll do this at 175 degrees Celsius and I'll bake it for about 10 to 12 minutes. I bake it in a convection oven. If you have the oven with no fan, the baking time will be slightly different. It will be longer. So uh, adjust the temperature and the time accordingly. And anyway, I'll show you how this baked sponge will look like. After 10 minutes in the oven at 175 degrees Celsius, the sponge is ready. As you can see, it has a uniform golden brown color. And when I touch it, it springs back, which means it is perfectly baked. Now, the best way to cool the sponge is to put it in the freezer directly. Like this, the moisture will uh, be kept inside and the sponge will stay tender and moist for a long time. If you don't have such an option, or such an opportunity, uh, you can leave it to cool down at room temperature completely and then wrap it with the cling film and put it in the fridge until needed. It can be stored in the fridge for up to five days or you can use it uh, the same day when you bake it. Now I prepared the crunchy layer for the tarts. It consists of the following ingredients. The dried coconut, the crunchy wafers, then the almond paste or almond butter, which is basically almonds blended into a paste. You can use any nut paste of your choice, peanut butter or peanut paste, almond paste, hazelnut paste, whatever. It will give the flavor, will bind the ingredients, but will also prevent the crunchy layer from being too hard. Then the chocolate. Uh, I'm using Valrona passion fruit inspiration chocolate to give uh, additional acidity to the crunchy layer and some flavor. But if you don't have it or you, if you don't have access to it, you can use any uh, chocolate you like. White chocolate, milk or dark. But with this tart, white chocolate would be the best option. And then lastly, the salt. I'll start by mixing uh, the chocolate and the almond butter in the mixing bowl first. The chocolate is melted. It is at 35 to 40 degrees Celsius now. The almond butter is at room temperature. As you can see, we have no wet ingredients, no liquids in the crunchy layer and this is vital and crucial because our idea, our goal is to preserve the crunchiness 
of these two components of the fuitin, the wafers and uh, the coconut, we need to protect them from humidity and moisture. Uh, this is why we're using only fatty ingredients which will cover them with fat and will crystallize in the fridge, protecting them from uh, moisture of the cream, of the sponge and of the fridge as well. Then I will add the salt and we'll mix uh, these three ingredients together. Now I'll add the crunchy components, the coconut. It is a dried coconut. Uh, if you wish, you can toast it in the saucepan or in the oven. I leave it like this because I already have uh, toasted wafers. They will have a biscuity flavor and the coconut will have a fresh coconut flavor and it will have also a white color, which will be uh, a contrast to uh, the baked color of the wafers. And now the wafers and a gentle mix, not to destroy the structure of the wafers. Don't press too much because you will break the wafers and they won't be as crunchy as now. Now, when the crunchy layer is ready, I will spread it uh, in the center of our baked and cooled tart shell. I don't need a lot. Using an offset spatula, I will spread the crunchy layer in the center, like this. After spreading the crunchy layer, I leave it at room temperature for about 5 minutes and meanwhile we'll cut the discs out of the sponge. I will stick those discs directly on top of the crunchy layer for them to stick well. I need the crunchy layer to be at room temperature. So now I'll cut the sponge. It has cooled down. It is about 3 to 4 degrees Celsius now. Here I have a 12 cm cake ring and I'll use this to cut the discs out of the sponge. I'll press it like this, one and two. Here's the sponge, it is very soft. See the texture, it is very porous, very light, beautiful. And now I'll put this disc directly on top of the crunchy layer and press it well to stick. Now, after putting the sponge on top of the crunchy layer, I'll put the tarts in the fridge for 5 to 10 minutes until the crunchy layer sets well. And then I'll be able to assemble and decorate the tart. 
The rest of the sponge can be used for something else and you can store it in the freezer for up to one month if wrapped well with a plastic wrap. After 12 hours in the fridge, the whipped ganache has sat. It has jellified slightly, now it looks like this. Now I'll transfer it to the mixing bowl and we'll start whipping. The chocolate has sat, the gelatin has created a structure, all the fat has crystallized and it means that the texture of the whipped ganache will be perfect. I start whipping on low speed first and then we'll increase the speed gradually to medium high. Um, never on maximum speed because this ganache whips quite fast and you need to keep an eye on it not to over whip the ganache. After a few minutes of whipping, the whipped ganache is ready. I'll show you its texture now. It looks like this. It's very soft, creamy, resembles soft serve ice cream. Its texture is smooth and I will be able to pipe it perfectly. Now, I'll transfer it into a piping bag with a round uh, piping tip of 18 millimeters in diameter. There is one thing left uh, that I need to show you, is the texture of the passion fruit and mango confit. It has sat in the fridge, now it looks like this, has jellified. To use it, I need to mix it with a spatula or a whisk to break its structure and make it more liquid. Now, when the confit turned a bit more liquid and shiny, I'll transfer it into a piping bag without any tip and we'll start assembling the top. To decorate the tart, I'll start by popping the whipping ganache first. I'll do it the following way. Then I cover uh, the sponge with a bit of ganache as well. And then we'll pipe the mango and passion fruit confit on top. At this point, the tarts have to be put in the fridge for five to 10 minutes to set the confit layer, and then I'll be able to pipe the rest of the whipped ganache on top. After 10 minutes in the fridge, the confit has stabilized, and now I'm able to pipe
After piping the whipped ganache on the tarts, I'll sprinkle each tart with um, dried coconut to create a unique texture and a very elegant look. So I'll do like this. Not a lot, just a bit to cover the whipped ganache. After this, using a Parisian spoon or a melon bowler, uh, not a very big one, like uh, 2.5, 3 centimeters in diameter, I'll make uh, holes in some of the uh, whipped ganache domes randomly. To do this, I'll heat the spoon with a torch, just a little bit, not too much, otherwise it will melt the whipped ganache too, too much. And then, randomly, like this, I'll make holes. Here, one here, one here maybe. One more somewhere here. After this, I'll fill each crater with mango and passion fruit confit. And now these tarts are ready to be decorated with fresh fruits. I'll use fresh raspberries, mango, dragon fruit and fresh coconut. To prepare the fruits for decoration, I'll start with raspberries. I'll simply cut them in half and then we'll use those uh, raspberry halves to decorate the tart. It is best to do this with a serrated knife, not to break the raspberry. The knife has to be sharp. Like this. After raspberries, I'll prepare the mango. It has to be ripe, but still a bit hard to touch, like this. When you press the mango, you should feel resistance. It should not be too soft, otherwise you won't be able to cut it into cubes. So first I will peel the mango using a vegetable peeler to remove only the top part of the skin only a thin part to have maximum of uh, mango flesh. Then I'll remove uh, as maximum of mango flesh as possible from the both sides of the mango stone. Like this from one side. and from the other side as well. And then I'll cut this into small cubes. So first I'll make this part flat. So I'll be using these perfectly square mango pieces for decoration, so I'll set them aside.
Next is dragon fruit. Here it is. I'll remove the top part of it first. And then I'll remove the bottom part as well. And we'll open the flesh of the dragon fruit, removing the skin. I find it convenient to uh, peel only half of the dragon fruit to make the decoration I want to make. So now, using a melon bowler, a small one, uh, three centimeters in diameter maximum, I'll make the bowls out of the dragon fruit. Like this. Gently. Lastly, I will make the decoration out of the coconut. First of all, I need to open it. To do this, I'm using a rolling pin and a bowl to collect the coconut juice. So I just hit the coconut until it cracks open and then I break it in half and then we'll show you how to make the decoration. After opening the coconut, I'll break it in half, like this. And then, using a vegetable peeler, I'll make slices of the coconut to have the beautiful white flesh and the beautiful black or dark brown part to have a nice color contrast. So this is the way, like this. After slicing the coconut, I'll put it in the silicone mold. It's a regular semi-sphere silicone mold with three centimeters in diameter. And I put the curls here inside to curve them. And then we'll use these for decoration. It is a nice way to make the decoration ahead of time. You can keep them like this in the proofer, in a warm place, you can put them in the oven at uh, 50 degrees for about uh, two to three hours to dry completely. And then they can be stored for a very long time and used for decoration. Now it is time to decorate our tarts. I'll start by putting the dragon fruit, then the mango, and lastly, the raspberry and coconut. And now the final touch, a little bit of lime zest on top of the tart. My exotic tart is ready. It looks seducing thanks to the creamy cloud topped with appetizing fresh fruits. 
the well-baked shortbread flour creates a delicious contrast with the creamy filling. The fruit brings freshness to the tart. Beautiful. Let's cut the tart and look how it is inside. You can see three baked textures, the crunchy layer, the almond sponge, and the Viennese shortbread complemented with the whipped coconut ganache and the mango and passion fruit confit. Let me try it now. Mmm, delicious. The contrast of taste is as gorgeous as the look. The well-baked shortbread is fragrant, crunchy and perfectly complements the creamy filling. The fresh lime zest leaves a magic aftertaste. This tart looks extremely festive, but at the same time you'll need only basic pastry tools to make it. Be curious and learn new approaches to create your pastries.